What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Semi Radio Sports Network. And today is my NFL mock draft version four. So, to break this down, this time I have the correct order. All right. So, the order is correct. I fucked it up last time. I forgot to change the order. I was tired and I didn't fucking do it. That's my fault. But I have the order, and this time I actually decided to do a huge breakdown of what I actually think will happen. You notice there is a red, and I'll explain that red in a second. But this is a very interesting mod draft, in my opinion. I, I decided to go back to the go completely out of the water. You never know what could happen type of mock draft. And I think there are a lot of possibilities here that could happen, and there's some that could maybe, and there's one that I think would be the shock of the night so we're doing this a little live as you can see so i'm gonna go and control it with my mouse while we do this so the first pick is the cleveland browns and i have them picking deshaun kaiser the quarterback out of notre dame so i do not believe that the cleveland browns will select a quarterback with the number one overall pick but I think that there is a very, very high possibility they can, and I do not think it'll be Deshaun Watson. Reason being is because I feel like <clears throat> with Deshaun Watson declining to go to the Senior Bowl when they wanted him to, I think that they are now maybe not really feeling the way that they used to feel about him. Therefore, I think that they will opt to maybe take a quarterback number one because obviously they would want to. But I'm thinking that they might take quarterback number one. I don't think it'll be Deshaun Watson. Out of anybody that's most pro-ready in this draft, I believe it is Deshaun Kaiser. I think that um, the only knock that they have with Deshaun Watson is he's his not as accurate uh, as you would like him to be. But I do definitely like Deshaun Watson a lot as well. But you'll see most of the time when I break it down. So now we go to the second overall pick, which is the San Francisco 49ers. So um, I decided to do a little wild one here so it was either going to be mitch trubisky or miles garrett and i thought why not get a nice edge rusher they do run a 3-4 i don't know if kyle shanahan will be bring a 3-4 but they have the personnel to do it so why not continue to do it and take miles garrett and put him on the edge there and have him be an edge rusher in that 3-4 scheme which could work and i think if deshaun kaiser is there miles garrett has to be the surefire pick then we go to the chicago bears and deshaun watson so I believe that the Bears will select Jonathan Allen. I do not think that they will take a quarterback in the first round. But with Kaiser already gone, I feel like the Bears might panic and grab a QB. And if you had to tell me between Mitch Trubisky and Deshaun Watson right now, I would pick Deshaun Watson 100%. Uh, and I think the Bears would likely take Deshaun Watson here. I feel like it would be a great pick for them. Uh, and Dabo Sweeney said if the Browns didn't pick him, they'd be passing on Michael Jordan. I mean, that is a comparison that uh, is amazing to me but i think he has the the quality to be a winner and i think if the browns pass on him the 49ers will pass on him as well and i feel like deshaun watson will go now once again like i said this draft is a little bit out there but i think that there's a lot of things that could possibly maybe happen let me quickly no yeah there's there's things that could happen one of these should be a red uh, i'll explain why and i'll change it to a red now just so that we are clear when i get to the pick so now we continue to go. So Chicago Bears, Jacksonville Jaguars now. Jonathan Allen. I feel like they want to get a nice defensive tackle to go alongside with the guy they paid a lot of money to uh, this offseason. And I feel like Jonathan Allen is the perfect pick. You put him a defensive tackle there, and he's probably the most pro-ready guy in this entire draft. Tennessee Titans. They need secondary help. I've said this many, many times. I feel like they go with Jamal Adams. Usually I've put this pick as Mike Williams. Changing it up a little bit, though. I'm going with Jamal Adams. Uh, changing it, not really, a, 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 like, I'm actually changing this draft a lot. There's really not a lot of picks that are the same here. Uh, so I'm going with Jamal Adams. I think it could be a surefire pick. They need secondary help badly. Uh, I feel like it could be a great pick there. New York Jets, I have them selecting Mitch Trubisky, the quarterback out of UNC. Uh, I think that the Jets are picking a quarterback no matter what at six, unless all of them go in the first five picks, which is highly unlikely. And... With Watson and Kaiser already gone, the best QB on the board is Trubisky, so I feel like they could do that. Now, San Diego Chargers, I have them selecting Derek Barnett in case they lose Melvin Ingram, which might happen. Uh, you never really know. He could sign back. He could not sign back. Um, you would be seeing most likely Derek Barnett. He could come off the edge there, and that would be great for them, even though he plays on the line. 
Uh, you can convert him into that 3-4 to become an edge rusher or maybe move Joey Bosa. Either way, uh, both of them have some electric speed and they can rush the passer. So it shouldn't be too hard. Carolina Panthers, this is my surefire pick here. I have them picking Leonard Fournette. Uh, I feel like it could be a great pick for them. They need a guy in the backfield to help Cam Newton, without a doubt. Uh, Leonard Fournette is one of the best running backs in this draft. I have him slightly over Dalvin Cook now after watching some tape. Cincinnati Bengals, Solomon Thomas. I feel like they could get some youth on that defensive line. Uh, and Solomon Thomas is one of the best defensive edge rushers in this draft, or defensive ends, I guess you could say, in this draft. Uh, besides Jonathan Allen, but I think Allen will play QB or boot play defensive tackle. So um, that's what I have there. Buffalo Bills with the possibility of losing Zach Brown. They could grab Ruben Foster. Either way, they run a 3-4, so they would need another guy there. I don't know if they're still running a 3-4, but they have the personnel to do so. I don't think they would be switching to a 4-3. But either way, if they lose Zach Brown to free agency, you can see Ruben Foster going to the Bills. I feel like that could be a great pick. And this is one that needs explaining. So before all the Saints fans get on my ass and say, Pat Mahomes, we don't need a quarterback. We don't need this. We don't need that. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Like I said, this is a little bit of an out there type of point of view, but I feel like it's a possibility. So with the great Drew Brees, our Lord and Savior Drew Brees getting older, I think there is a possibility that the Saints could be looking at a quarterback in this draft. Maybe not this high, but with the recent findings of Pat Mahomes maybe going in the first round, which makes no sense to me because I do not believe that he is a quality talent QB, I feel like he could go to the Saints. I feel like there's a lot of players who get hyped up way too much and end up being failures. I think Pat Mahomes could be one of those guys, but because of the fact that he's getting hyped up a lot uh, and Brad Kaya's grade is falling, I feel like they could take Pat Mahomes here and take a reach and take a risk. I feel like it's very highly unlikely, but if they were to think, who's someone that we can train under Drew Brees to be the next guy in New Orleans, I think you could take Pat Mahomes. They don't have a quarterback like that on their roster now, so why not? And then if anything, if Brees doesn't retire next year or in the next two years and you feel like Mahomes is ready, then maybe trade Brees to somebody who needs a quarterback along with maybe good old... Um, Sean Payton. So you could do something like that. Like I said, I think it's highly unlikely, hence the red grade, which is why I had to change it, but it is the red grade, highly unlikely. So now we go to Cleveland Browns. Why not pair up your new quarterback with a new great wide receiver? So most likely it could be losing Terrell Pryor and losing Josh Gordon. They're not giving Josh Gordon another chance. So those are two guys you could lose. You'd only have Corey Coleman. Why not get probably the best wide receiver we'll see in the next couple of years out of the draft? Uh, and Mike Williams do will be a surefire pick and that would be dope to pair them together I think it'd be great if they could pair together Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams I mean that would be abs outstanding I don't think Mike Williams falls this far but if he does I feel like the Cleveland Browns could pick him I think they'd rather go defense but I mean why not give your shiny new quarterback a shiny new wide receiver am I right Arizona Cardinals Okay, before Cardinals fans get on my ass, because I had a Cardinal fan get on my ass the other day about a pick that I had them making. This isn't a red, but this is a yellow. I feel like it's a very high possibility. The offensive line for the Arizona Cardinals isn't the best, and plus with Carson Palmer getting older, you want to get some youth on that offensive line. Cam Robinson is the best offensive lineman in this draft by far. There's no one that even compares to him. And why not get that quality talent? I think he'll go in the top 10. But if he falls, like I have him falling here, I feel like there's just some talent that you cannot pass on. They drafted uh, they, they drafted some guys in previous, and it hasn't worked out. I feel like Cam Robinson can be the guy here. I don't think they'll take a quarterback, but if they do, it'll probably be Brad Kaya. I think it'll be a bad pick. Indianapolis Colts, Dalvin Cook. They need a running back. I mean, I've had Cook going to the Colts for a while. I'm not even explaining this one. Philadelphia Eagles, they need secondary help. I don't see all the hype around Mar uh, Marlon Humphrey, but apparently a lot of people like him. I don't see the hype. I see him not even as a first rounder, but because of hype, I will put him in this first round. Uh, I dropped him out last time. Now he's moving all the way back up. Uh, so I will bring Marlon Humphrey back into this one, and he goes 15 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Baltimore Ravens definitely need some corner help as well. Why not grab Quincy Wilson? Duke could be a stud. I feel like he, he'll get taken before Tease Tabor, Jalen Tease Tabor. 
Uh, but I feel like Tease Tabor might be the more ready one, but I feel like Quincy Wilson maybe has the most upside. I would love to see him fall to the Dolphins, but we need other needs. So now we go to the Washington Washingtons. I refuse to say their names. They will draft Corey Davis. Now I feel like they're going to need a wide receiver. I don't think Pierre Garcon is staying. And unless Kirk Cousins is in a Washington Redskin next year, they maybe could trade up for the number one picking at a quarterback, which would be fucking stupid, but they could. Uh, but right now, as I seize it, I have them getting a wide receiver to replace good old Pierre Garcon. So now Tennessee Titans, like I said, they need secondary help. Jalen T's Tabor is right there for the take in. You pair, you got a now, you got a nice new safety and you get a nice new corner. Uh, them and the Browns, I feel like there's no way they can go wrong in this draft. You guys have great picks. Uh, why not take advantage of them? Especially the Browns. I mean, they have two picks in the top 12. They have two second rounders, two thirds and a fourth and a fifth. I mean, the Browns, they cannot go wrong with this draft. I mean, if they do, it would be one of the most colossal failures I've ever seen. And the Eagles would get out squeaky clean, which would make no sense. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have them selecting Chris Warmly. Defensive tackle out of Michigan. Uh, they run a 4-3. Why not bring another defensive tackle to go alongside of Gerald McCoy? Could be a nice fit. Denver Broncos. They need offensive line help. It's very clear. Uh, best offensive lineman's off the boards to go with Ryan Ramschick. I think that's how you say his last name. Once again, I've never been corrected, so I'm going to keep saying Ramschick. Uh, and he's offensive tackle out of Wisconsin. Detroit Lions. If you saw the Detroit Lions once their top corners went down, you know that they need def at corner. They definitely need def at corner. I would love to slot them here, Caleb Brantley. A lot of people have, and I think Caleb Brantley is one of the top talents in this draft. But they need corner help unless they address it in free agency. Uh, they could go with the next best corner on the board, which is Marshawn Lattimore from Ohio State. Now, the Miami Dolphins. This is probably my favorite pick, and I've had him slotted here three out of the four times that I've done this draft. I was only once where I had Quincy Wilson there, but now I'm putting him back. Zach Cunningham is my favorite outside or inside linebacker in this draft. I think that Ruben Foster is the only guy I would give an A grade to besides Cam Robinson in this draft and maybe even besides Leonard Fournette, but... Zach Cunningham, I feel like, has the most upside out of any linebacker in this draft. And if he somehow falls past the Cardinals, then I think that there's no way that they don't pick him. I think he will end up falling. I think he will fall to 22. Out of a lot of mocks I've seen, a lot of people do agree with me. I saw someone slot in O.J. Howard there. They're fucking stupid. We need so much defensive help. It's insane. Uh, Zach Cunningham, I would love to see him in Miami Dolphins uniform. It would be absolutely amazing. With the possibility of Jonathan Hankins going, why not bring in Caleb Brantley? Really good quality Florida defensive tackle to replace Hankins uh, in case you lose him. I think they will lose Hankins and JPP, so shit's unfortunate. But you get a guy on a rookie contract with all the defensive money you spent. It would be horrible. Oakland Raiders, they need defensive help. You could you saw it later on in the year. Their defense is not that great. Why not get a nice defensive end in Charles Harris and move uh, Khalil Mack back to outside linebacker instead of playing him on the uh, defensive line like they did this year. So now we go Houston Texans. All right. I know you guys have seen this. You've been listening to this video. Your first thing is you went through and saw who I had going where. And you saw Brad Kaya to the Houston Texans? What the fuck is this guy thinking? Let me go type on my keyboard. You fucking idiot. Brad Kaya's not going to the Texans. All right. Listen. Listen to me. Let, put Make sure your earbuds are in. Nice and loud, nice and soft. Make sure that you have your volume turned all the way up because we need to talk here, all right? The Houston Texans need a quarterback. They don't have the pieces to move up to number one. They don't have the pieces to move up to two or three or four or five. They just don't. They don't have the pieces, and they're not willing to give them away even if they did have the pieces because all of them are on defense. And they're not going to give up a wide receiver, and they're not going to give up Lamar Miller. They just signed him. It's not going to happen, all right? With the possibility of these quarterbacks flying off the board, there are going to be teams in the second round that are going to either bite on Mahomes if he's there or Brad Kaya, and they're going to bite on him early. And the Texans are in desperate need of a QB. Brock Osweiler is not the answer. You're stuck with him for one more year, but he is not the answer. That is so apparent that he's not the answer. Brad Kaya will need a couple years of development. You might not be that great, but with a good defense, he has a good running back in the backfield, an overrated one in my opinion, but he's still a good running back in the backfield. And you have some great receivers. Get a guy, work with him, 
build him up under the Bill O'Brien system, a quarterback picked by Bill O'Brien, a guy he wants, and let him develop. I'm not the biggest fan of Brad Kaya. I've seen a lot of bad stuff out of him, but when I saw good stuff, the dude was outstanding. So if you can see some good stuff, you got to grab Brad Kaya here. I think it's a very unlikely possibility this happens. Hence, the red grade. But, if possible, got to take a quarterback there. So, Seattle Seahawks, Taco Charlton, defensive end out of Michigan. Uh, I feel like they could get some defensive line youth. Their defensive linemen are all over 30. You need some youth in that position. If one of them gets hurt, they could consider retirement. That would not be good. Kansas City Chiefs. I've always had the Kansas City Chiefs picking Christian McCaffrey. That's never changing. I think they need a running back. Christian McCaffrey can be a running back, a wide receiver in the slot. Man, that dude is talented as hell. Dallas Cowboys. All right, this one's in green. Dallas Cowboys fans, listen to me. You guys are probably the same way as the Cardinals fans, or sorry, as the Saints fans and as the Texans fans. You're typing in the comments that I'm a fucking idiot. And you know what? I get it. I do. But think about this. This is a draft loaded with defensive talent. I mean, when I say loaded, there are guys in the bottom half of the second that can go in the first. It's absolutely insane how loaded this draft is with defensive talent. And why not grab OJ Howard, who's a tight end while he's still available? Yes, there are some tight ends that will fall later in the draft, but with the possibility of Jason Witten retiring maybe soon rather than later, or maybe later rather than soon. OJ Howard is a top quality tight end. Why not bring him into Dallas and be able to build him up around your system? Another nice young guy there. You can get Dak Prescott acquainted to him. You could run a really good two tight end system next year. And then once good old Jason Witten retires, you have a good guy there to back him up. We saw this last year with Antonio Gates and Hunter Henry. And I'd like to think that it's going to be a good pick in the future. I saw some great things out of Hunter Henry this year. I feel like it could be a great pick. This is getting a little long, so let me let me speed it up a little bit. Green Bay Packers. Okay, I don't necessarily think that they need corner help. But with not a lot of great quality here, I don't think they're going to take defensive tackle. And I don't think they're going to take Jabil Peppers. So I'm going to go with Sidney Jones, cornerback out of Washington. Pittsburgh Steelers. Adoree Jackson. They need corner help, and they need corner help bad. That is not a, like, that's the most obvious thing. You saw it, especially on the game on Sunday. I'm not going to talk shit, though, because the Dolphins need more help than they do on defense. Atlanta Falcons, you can get a nice defensive tackle there. Malik McDowell, they don't currently have a great one on their roster. So why not bring a guy to get in with that elite defense? I mean, that defense is amazing. And then the yellow pick. Notice this is not red. This is yellow. The New England Patriots selecting Jabril Peppers. Now, the Patriots have two good safeties. I'm not going to lie. Patrick Chung and Devin McCourty. Uh, but Chung hasn't shown that great, that much greatness in, uh, recently. Devin McCourty is Devin McCourty. You can't deny the man that's Devin McCourty. Jabril Peppers doesn't have the weight to play linebacker. But... This is such a versatile guy. Why wouldn't he bite? I mean, if if I'm good old Bill Belichick, I'm biting right now. I'm going hunting. Like, to, to think that there's a possibility that I could get Javon Peppers to play both safety and he can come down in the box and play linebacker with his coverage skills and his athletic ability, I'm going to bite on that. I think it's highly unlikely, but... Shit, man. Bill Belichick has shown us some shit in the past that we have not even seen coming. So, hope you guys enjoy my very enthusiastic NFL mock draft. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys like the fact that I'm doing some of this stuff live and you can see me doing it and hear me typing on my keyboard and shit. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying that and enjoying it not being like super 
like pictures with black around it or pictures that are too fully sized that are bad and all this other stuff. I wanted to make it a little bit better. So I spent some time working on my stuff, even though this is OBS and it's not that hard. I wanted to work on it. I wanted to make sure everything could be a little bit better, especially for the streams. Make sure you follow my stream. It'll be the first link down below in the description. I am streaming on Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be on Twitch, no longer on YouTube. We're moving up in the world. So hope you guys did very much enjoy this mod draft. Make sure you like the video and make sure you subscribe if you're a new subscriber we're on the way to 400 trying to get to 500 by june i think we'll hit it and trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year and as always peace